Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So we're going to do a tutorial on this beautiful rose. And as difficult as it might look, it's pretty easy peasy. So I'm going to do it in red with my green stem. But you can choose any colors you want. If you want to do a brown stem, green leaves, and, and then whatever, purple rose, red rose, pink rose, there's all kinds of different blue roses, there's all kinds of, I'm, I'm eventually, I'm going to do a whole bouquet of them, so, um, but I just did my stem in green, um, you can do your stem in any color, um, you are going to need a straw for it though, um, I made it a straw because I find it easier to work with. Um, but the pattern I actually got this from out of the magazine um, uses um, wire and the way that they were doing it just seemed so difficult. So I just found an easier way to do it and this was the outcome. So we're going to need a stretched plastic straw. And we're not going to use the whole straw. I'm actually, because that's the size of the straw, so um, I actually cut the straw. But we'll go through that anyway in the tutorial. So, I'm going to use a number four hook. Even though I'm using yarn that calls for a 5.5 um, hook, um, I'm going to use a, a number four hook. So, let's start with our first color, red. And you're going to need the usual, I don't really need to tell you, scissors, darning needle. Um, the, only, the only oddball thing you're going to need is the straw, so. Make a slip knot. And chain 37. That's my 37. So in the fourth chain down, you're going to double crochet starting there and then all the way down your chain. So one, two, three, four, count your bumps, find your fourth chain. Oh, I'm supposed to double crochet into that and then all the way back up to the end. lost my ball.
and the final stitch. You should have 35 stitches in your first row. So we're going to chain three and we're going to turn our work. And in the very first stitch, we're going to put a double crochet. And a double crochet in the next stitch. And this is where we get into our repeat. We're going to chain one, we're going to skip one, we're going to put two double crochets into the next one. And then one double crochet in the next three. And that's our repeat. So we're going to do this six times across. So at the end of it, you should have seven of these skip one, chain one spaces. So chain one, skip one, and into the next one, put two double crochets. And then a double crochet in the next three stitches. That's our second. Chain one, skip one, put two double crochets. Sorry my camera shut off, don't know why it does that. Two double crochets in that hole and one double crochet in the next three. Chain one, skip one, two double crochets. And one, oops, one double crochet in the next three stitches. Chain one, skip one, the next one, you're going to put two double crochets, and then one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So these chain spaces, you can see them better when I set it down. One, two, three, four, five. This is number six chain space. So chain one, skip one, go into the next chain, put two double crochets, and one double crochet in the next three. up one piece of yarn there. I want to pick up two pieces of yarn. So 
So chain one, skip one, and slip stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we've got seven holes. So I'm going to refer to these holes in our next row. I'm going to refer to them as the chain one space, okay? So row three. Let's chain two. Turn our work. So row three, we're going to go right into this. We're going to skip this stitch altogether. I completely skip him. And we're going to go right into this guy and we're going to put seven double crochets right into there. seven double crochets all in that chain one space so if you pull this back because this is pretty loaded but there is a stitch find something to point with where's my pointer okay so let's put this down so you can see it better So we've shoved all these, but if you pull all this back, there's a chain space right in there. So one, two, three, you're going to skip. And in this chain here, you're going to slip stitch. So skip three. One, two, three. And that chain right above the, the in between these posts. That chain there is where you're going all along. So after you put seven in each of these holes, you're gonna have to pull back to see that stitch, one, two, three, and you're gonna miss it. So skip it, skip it, skip it, hit it. And you're gonna slip stitch. And pull tight. Then straight from your slip stitch, you're going to go in here and do seven double crochets, just like we just did. Seven. Sorry if I screwed up your count. So one, two, three, skip and slip stitch right into that guy there. And you're going to go right into the hole, right into the chain space, and you're going to do seven more. And we're going to repeat this all the way across. There's seven. One, two, three. I'm gonna go right into the next stitch and you're gonna slip stitch and pull tight.
One, two, three. Oops. Two more spaces. And the last one. You're going to skip whatever's left. You're just going to go right to the end. You're just going to slip stitch and fasten off. And we are done. So don't hidey ho these guys at all. We need these for later. So we're just going to kind of keep them attached. And we're going to move over here. We're, we're going to get our second color the opposite side of these two guys this is where we're going to start with our new color so I'm going to just get my green so this is where we're going to be building the stem so I'm just going to make a slip knot I'm going to take it off I'm going to find my first stitch that guy back on so I'm just gonna come through and I'm gonna do just a, a single crochet but in the same stitch I'm gonna do a half double crochet in that same stitch And I'm going to do four more across. So that's one, two, three, four. I'm going to do number five. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn. This is going to be our stem. So um, we're going to taper as we go down, but when we put it around the straw, I'm going to also taper it. So um, it, it may be hard to tell. It's not a, an extreme taper but it is a taper but I also wanted it strong enough that you could stand this up in a small vase or 
have them laid on a table with a, a bow wrapped around them or say you're making them for um, a bouquet for somebody's wedding I wanted this to be strong enough so it's not an extreme taper but it there is a taper so we have got our five here so you're going to chain one and turn which I've already done and you're just going to half double crochet across um, for the next three rows I only want four rows and then I'm going to start doing a decrease so three more rows all you're going to do is simply half double crochet across chain one turn your work half double crochet across don't forget go right into this first stitch that keeps everything nice and straight and it's not going to be all wonky so we're just doing a half double crochet nothing more nothing less for the stem because I really don't and I'm using a smaller needle like I said before that this is supposed to be the hook they call for this is a 5.5 and I'm using a 4 I really don't want to see the straw through it now the straw I used for this one is an orange straw I just happen to have a, a, a multi colored pack and I mean if if I come in really close you can see what well, looks yellow because of the green but you can see but from afar you cannot see that straw other than here <laughs> but that's because now I pointed it out you can see it but again if that's being held in somebody's hands or that's in a glass just sitting there you're not going to see it so where was I one two three four so we're just that's why I chose to do the um, half double crochet stitch just because it's a tighter stitch because don't really want to see any of this so you're chaining one in between your turns so I've got two more rows Not get into that stitch. This last stitch gives me a problem every single time. I do not know why. It's like my tension. I don't know if it's my tension. But that stitch gives me a problem. I try not to pulse tape. There, we're just gonna keep it all loose, being loose. What am I at? I said I had three more, right? One, two, three. I was doing four, so this is my last one anyway. And then I'm gonna start um, my decrease. There's only ten rows to this stem. I didn't, uh, oh, I didn't yarn over. I didn't go overly crazy with the stem. Um, I could have gone longer because obviously the straw is longer, but um, you can go longer if you want. So this rose, that's centimeters, let's measure in inches. So seven inches. or 18 centimeters so if you want to do a longer stem you can but so it's, it's a good size that's not bad seven inches ladies not bad at all workable Anyway, 
So I'm going to start my decrease. So my decrease is just going to be um, the first two stitches are going to be a half double crochet, um, two together. So come in like you're doing a half double, but then don't do anything. Go into the next stitch and pull through again. And then pull through all your pieces. And we got an extra stick here. St stick. Stitch here. So we're just going to half double crochet that. And then we're going to half double crochet again these last two stitches. And that is our decrease. So now all we're going to do, so that's row five. So we're going to do five more rows of just straight down. It's just a minor, 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 because I want to sew this together, right? So I don't, I can't make it too tight, but um, that's why I did a taper while I was sewing it together too with the straw, because I just cut the straw. But anyway, um, so let's finish this. We have five rows of uh, three stitches. There's one, two, There's five. Actually, I'm pretty sure I went longer than that. I said ten, didn't I? Five, plus we'd already done one, two, three, four. And then my decrease is one, two, three, four, five. Oh. So I showed you the first two decreases. Okay. So I have three more I have to do. But like I said, it's your choice. It's your flower. You know what you're doing with it. Um, the um, pattern for the rose itself that I got from the magazine like I said, the stem was just a um, wire. So I had to come up with the stem and then I decided to put leaves on it because, well, roses have leaves generally up by the flower part and then thorns down the rest of the way. Um, so that's why these leaves are so far up because a rose will have leaves just under the flower part but I only did two I wasn't gonna go because I mean they would be all the way around but I didn't want to overwhelm the idea and I think it looks pretty just with the two and again if you wanted to change the color of green so I just did the stem and the leaves the same color but if you are doing a, say a brown stem and green leaves that's great but if you're doing a green stem like me and you wanted to make these a lighter color green, you could do that too. Okay, I just changed my battery, so I haven't bothered to uh, turn 
I haven't done my other two rows yet. So let me just quickly catch up to you. I guess for you it was only a split second. For me it was 30 seconds. So fasten off. Once you're done your stem, you can just fasten off. Because I, and you don't have to leave a big long piece. We're just going to cut a new piece because we're going to sew from the flower down. Because we got to we got to cover the end of the straw. So you can just um, fasten off and cut cut your your um, and your yarn as as close to, if you wow I cannot talk all of a sudden I cannot get into that stitch again there we go all right last one fasten off uh, like I was saying doesn't matter how short I finally got it out so move my straw for now so we're keeping these two kind of hanging there because we're going to use those but um, I'm going to sew that guy in as soon as I find my needle there it is I'm going to sew these two guys in because I don't need them um, this isn't even remotely long enough to sew all the way down, so like I said, I'm cutting a whole new piece for that. So I'm just going to stick this guy just all along here. It's going to be all curled up. It's not going anywhere. It's going to be all sewn up with the, with the straw, but I'm going to do it anyway. Alrighty, well, I'm just gonna shove him up. Like, same same concept. This guy is gonna be um, gonna be all sewn in with the straw, so it doesn't even matter. So let's thread one of these yarns, the top one. Because the top one is what we're going to use first. So let's start rolling. Don't worry what this guy does when you roll. Because we kind of want him to be open. But try to roll along the edge with your flower. And you can roll as tight or as loose as you want. But just roll along. So when it comes to sewing your flower, first thing is first, you don't want to just start sewing right at the petal because you're going to want to have the petals kind of fold out a little bit. So what we're first going to do is we're going to go down the side of that petal a little bit. Fold that as tight as you want it. I'm not going to tighten it that much. And then you're just going to sew in and pull so you just want to make sure that it's still going to, you're still going to be pliable. This is what you want. Um, when I'm done with the straw inside, I'm gonna pull this down a little bit. So, but you can still pull tight, it'll still move. And you can just keep tucking that away. Um, you can go as far as you want, um, in any direction you want. You're probably, no one's gonna see it. They're, I really don't think anyone's gonna see it. It is such a beautiful piece of work that no one's even gonna notice your Heidi threads. All 
we're gonna save this guy for later so for now this is where the straw comes in you're gonna take that straw and you're gonna shove it right up that hole as far as it'll go it will come all the way through but don't do that so you can have it down as far as you want um, you don't really want to see it like if I look straight down the straw I can see it I don't really care because no one's gonna be looking down my flower but you might so you can uh, put it as high and uh, or as low as you want but either way it's not gonna go anywhere once it's in there it doesn't matter how far in there it goes it's not going anywhere so let's take a piece of yarn Let's kind of pull your head up there. And you're gonna start right at the very tippy top of the green. Get your needle in there. And you're just gonna sew it over. Now we're not um tying a knot so just leave this guy hanging here and after you do your next stitch it will uh, and you don't have to stitch this like a whip stitch nobody is going to see it because we did half double crochets and that's the texture of the back nobody will see your stitches because of the texture of the back of that stitch so, no worries there. Oh, and my straw fell out. Let's stick that guy back up in there. So, I'm just trying not to strangle my rose. So, pull that tight. Make sure your straw is where you want it. Not that you can't move it while you're working down, but. And then just continue to do your sewing. Pull tight. So keep in mind, your straw does squish. Um, I cut it here in a minute. Um, just to get, once I'm past this part where I actually want to put um, the taper in, the, the other kind of taper, um, I'm going to cut the straw. And that way it just collapses more with, when, it, when you're sewing it. But while you're doing this, you can just push it down and it'll be nice and tight. Hopefully you got a good set of needles. So I'm just going to cut this about like that, so shorter than I than my stitches. And I'm just going to cut right up the middle on the front and the back side like that. So I can squish this now down as far as I want to. So I can put another taper in there. And pull as tight as you can. And again, don't worry about doing a whip stitch. You don't need to go 
stitch to stitch. You can just sew this bad boy up any way you want, any way that's going to hold, any way that looks good to you, but you're not going to see these stitches anyway because of the stitch that we use to, to crochet it with. What is happening here? How did I get so tangled? So I'm just making sure it's nice and tight and there's not an extreme taper on this like I said before. It's just a mild taper. Um, you can do it any way you want. This was my idea. Um, so I mean if you come up with a better idea feel free to share it in the comments. And I may do a video and and uh, I just um, didn't like the idea of the wire. I've got wire. I've got craft wire. I've got plant wire. Um, I have balloon wire. <laughs> I have really thick wire that you can make like little bicycles and stuff with and weld them together. Like I got all kinds of wire. But I didn't want to do a wire. And then I thought, hey, you know, I got all these straws that I don't use anymore because, you know, we're, we're not doing that these days as human beings. Um, every once in a while, that's not true. I shouldn't say I don't use them. Um, I will use them to make my shakes, my protein shakes. And I will cut them up before I throw them in the garbage into pieces. So I do use them. So just make sure you really connect your um, your end because you don't want anyone to see that straw. So that is done. So I'm just going to stick my stuff anywhere. So now that I've got my stem done, let's figure out where. So this guy moves around. Like I, we sewed the first one on to here but all of this moves so we need to figure out what we want our rows to look like so for this one I did drop it down considerably because I wanted to push back like I'm gonna block this so that when I do have you know my stuff pushed back um, it looks like a rose that's opening yeah so I did pull it down a bit and then I packed it in place. Um, do I want all my roses to look the same? I don't know. It doesn't really matter because this one can be kind of closed. Like when you get a bouquet of roses, they're not all the same. So I may just tag this guy where it's sitting right now because they don't all have to be open. Some can be closed and some can be open, so I'm just going to take it and I'm going to tack it to under here and then I'm going to come up so I'm kind of weaving like that. This is just going to hold this in a place, so now I'm going to go down in another spot and I'm going to make sure I go down into that red part. I'm just going to give that a good tug. Again, nobody's going to see it. Only, only we're going to know that it's there. So I've come full circle already. So I'm just going to kind of weave it in somewhere so I can snip it off and nobody really sees it. Nobody's going to see it. So that's not going to go anywhere. We're just going to cut it off. So now I've got a really long piece and then this really short piece. But we're going to put that aside for a second and we're going to make some leaves. Oh my gosh, kitty cat. I don't know if my camera just picked that up. My cat just had a sneezing fit. So let's 
let's make our leaves. These are pretty fast, pretty easy. Same needle. I used a four throughout the entire thing. So do a slip knot. You know, you could probably whip off a whole bouquet of these in a day. That's how easy and fast they are. So let's chain five. We're going to do two leaves. So they're so quick. I could do 15. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry if you're counting. It's only five though. So on the second stitch from the hook, I want you to just slip stitch. That just kind of gives you a kind of a weird look at the end. This one you're going to single crochet into the next one and then you're going to half double crochet into the next one oh I'm getting all tangled so in your last stitch you're going to double crochet five times in that last stitch I just came up with this stitch or this leaf um, on the fly um, so if you know of a better leaf then you know by all means use it you don't have to use my leaf um, it was just the size I liked but I mean if you don't like the look of it I'm sure you can find leaves on YouTube you can find anything on YouTube so pull your tail tight and it's going to come around and we're going to work on this side so we were here but as you're putting the five in here you can kind of see how it was curving around so your next stitch is right after the hole there's your center hole this is where we've just put five okay so I'm not sure where my camera shut itself off again but I've made one leaf so if I didn't record any of that then I have to make another one anyway my camera keeps saying it's overheating but it's not hot in here by any means so chain five So the second chain from the hook, I just want you to slip stitch. If you followed my star tutorials and stuff, you'll you'll know I do that a lot for stuff like that. It puts a nice point on it. So the next stitch after that, I just want you to single crochet, half double crochet in the next stitch. And in the final stitch, well not the final stitch, but the first stitch that you made, put five double crochets in there. And like I was saying to the camera when it was not recording, um, if you don't like my leaf, I kind of made it up on the fly. It was a last minute, hey, I should put some leaves on this. And um, I'm sure you could probably find some tutorials somewhere. You can find anything on YouTube. I just wanted something tiny. So you put your five in so we've kind of come around like this. So now we're going to be working on the other side. So right after this hole, this stitch right there after that hole, we're going to just 
work backwards to what I just did. So we're going to put a half double crochet into that hole. And that's going to kind of suck it all in and bring it together. And then I'm going to double, single crochet, double crochet. Oh my good lord. Single crochet into that stitch. Now we're all out of stitches. So I'm just going to slip stitch wherever I can get my my needle in or my hook my needle wherever I can get a hook in to the top so it's got a curvy little thing because that's what the leaves do on roses is they kind of curl up underneath the the rose so that's why I did it that way but like I said if you don't like it you can probably find sun leaves on on YouTube I would imagine so keep your end pieces. So now that I've made two, you're probably going to want to pause the video. I thought we were making the first one together, but my camera decided something different. So, oh, so now I've got these. I don't really need these, I suppose. That was kind of stupid. I can just cut these off. Nothing's going anywhere. Sorry, I wasn't thinking that I was going to have these so to keep the shape I'm going to sew the point on first and I'm going to sew it pretty close to the base because like I said that's where the leaves on a rose are so this up here is going to come into positioning this one here is just attaching it to the stem but at the same time now that I've come through there I still want to go down the back of this guy and weave him oops sorry I bumped you and weave him in there because I don't I don't want these flopping around so I'm gonna pull pretty tight and then I'm just gonna weave it down into the stem so it does not move so you can just cut that off and the top of this so the rounded part which should be sticking out from the flower. I'm going to use this to position the leaf. So I'm going to go down right down the back and then I'm going to go right into the stem from here. So it is tough to get it through there but when I pull, the, leaf's, the leaf goes into a position depending on how much I pull on that. So if I pull really hard, it comes down. But if I let up on it, it's going to sit up higher. So it all depends on where and how your rose is sitting. Whether it's going to be spread open or somewhat closed. Um, if it's somewhat closed, you want the leaf a little bit higher because... That's just how a rose is. So, once you've got the leaf into position, you can just weave your weave your yarn just so it doesn't come unraveled. Make sure you're giving it a nice tug. And leaf number two. Oh my god, my cat just scared the hell out of me. Excuse my language. <sighs> just jumped down out of that window and I don't know why it scared me so bad. So we got the leaf on this side. So I'm going to put the leaf on this side.
so I'm just going to stick it down that just secures it somewhat better that, give it a good tug and give her a snip And the positioning one, you're just going to go down three quarters of the back and right into that stem. Oh, it's a little stiff. So, this is where you decide how you want it. If you want it down like that you just give it a pull if you want it up like that you just leave it up like that so I think I'm gonna leave mine up because mine's somewhat closed because um, my pink one is a little more open so I think I'm just gonna leave my leaf up like that and then I'm just gonna hidey hole this guy wherever I'm really hiding and I'm just Tucking it away to secure it wherever I can. Give it a nice snug pull. Cut it off. And there you have it. I mean you can mess around with your leaves after after you've uh, blocked it and stuff like that. You can shape them better. You can shape them up more of a cup like that if you want. Um, to me, rose petals are more flat than cupped. But this one's going to be closed and this one's going to be open a little bit. And there we have it. We've got a couple of roses. This one's a little bit shorter. So sitting in a cup or being held in the hand. There you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was pretty easy to make. I'll see you in the next video.